To the Midwest now, where the Oklahoma House of Representatives has passed a bill that equates recruiting militia members to recruiting gang members. State representatives there say if you want to form a militia, you need to ask the state's permission or else you'll go to jail. Here to talk more about this is Cherie Giel, radio host for Truth Frequency Radio. Hey there, Cherie. Hi. This smells of a bill bound to get some major First Amendment challenges, but still, I want to hear what you think about all this. Well, absolutely. This is actually the second time in one week that the state has a state in the United States has passed an unconstitutional law. First, the Arizona immigration bill, and now we have this Oklahoma Senate bill, which essentially bans constitutional militias around the state. I think this is kind of a turning point in the game that the government is playing with its own citizens. Usually, it's the states protecting the citizens' rights against the federal government interfering. Now it's the other way around. So we're getting it from both sides now, both the federal and state, which is pretty disconcerting and an indicator that our political system is. Becoming increasingly more tyrannical in its nature. It's pretty interesting uh, some of the history that's brought up uh, in these types of discussions. For example, State Representative Mike Shelton has cited things like the bombing of the federal building in Oklahoma City 15 years ago and Timothy McVeigh's actions as one reason why this law is needed. And what is your response to this? Well, what's really interesting about Tim McVeigh is he actually had more experience and. Um, and involvement with the U.S. military than he did with militias, and so using the same broad stroke mentality, you could say, you could say that the military needs to be banned, or that um, other groups need to be banned. It, it's it's very silly. Uh, we've actually looked into this, and the KKK and the militias were added both as an amendment to the bill at the last minute, and the law considers militia membership to be equivalent with gang membership, which is a gross misrepresentation of what it is that militias do. And if you want to talk about gang warfare, all you have to do is look at the U.S. military. They have so much gang warfare in their own ranks that there, there have been so many suicides over in Iraq and Afghanistan, it's, it's ridiculous. The bill is now headed to the state Senate, but let's suppose it passes there as well. What would be the implications of this if this passed in both the state Senate uh, and the state House of Representatives? Well, we've spoken with militia members in Oklahoma and other states, and the rhetoric is all the same, that this is completely unconstitutional and that they're not going to let this stop them from engaging in a constitutional activity. And it's looking actually even more politically oriented when you realize that Oklahoma is trying to form a state-run militia, which is completely antithetical to the constitutional arrangements for militias in the Constitution, and essentially is the same as the National Guard. I mean, it's looking more and more like they're trying to eliminate the, co the competition of the citizen-run militia by using broad strokes and a poorly put together smear campaign directed primarily by the SPLC against law-abiding citizens who engage in constitutional militias. SPLC, the Southern Poverty Law Center, I'm curious uh, what you think about, I mean, you brought up earlier uh, that this is similar to Arizona, doing, you know, passing something unconstitutional. Talk to me about, have you followed at all sort of some other states that may be trying to come up with um, these laws or, or these bills that um, could be in clear violation? Well, uh, not with militias, but I've noticed some really interesting things, uh, say, in Chicago. They're trying to bring the National Guard in just to protect the streets from a little bit of gun crime. Um, I, and I said on the show a few days ago, we need to really watch out for the federal government trying to send the military or any kind of uh, National Guard in for, for little tiny things that we can absolutely handle on our own, especially if we had a well-regulated private militia, uh, citizen-run militia that can take care of their own states. Don't, don't let the federal government bring the military or the National Guard in when it's obviously not necessary. And Cherie, from your understanding with this bill in Oklahoma, when lawmakers there threw in, as you say at the last minute, the KKK and the militia, what, what is their definition of militia? Oh, their, their definition of militia is obviously a lot different than ours. If, if, if they think that the militia is, is equal to KKK membership, they're, they're very, very wrong in that regard. Um, I know a lot of militia people that are, are the nicest people ever meet. They, they're not racist at all. They're, they wouldn't even be seen with anybody from the KKK. And so when you demonize an entire uh, movement or an, an entire militia movement in the United States by lumping them in with the KKK, it, it looks like it's politically oriented. But for, for people, um, Sharif, for our viewers who may not understand exactly what a militia is or, or its purpose, uh, talk to me a little bit about this. Well, a militia is defined by the Constitution as being a well-regulated uh, group of citizens who decide to protect their, their country uh, from uh, federal government interference. Um, that's what it's become in the last uh, few years, especially uh, since uh, 1993, 1995, those kinds of things happen. Um, but 
militias have been painted as being uh, these renegade, you know, they're going to attack your police officers, they're going to attack people, and they're, they're not going to do that at all. They're going to protect people from federal interference. Can you give me a couple examples of um, militias that have been successful and have actually, uh, in your opinion, have helped society? Well, not recently, but I do know militias uh, such as the actual, actually the Hutari group that was raided was involved in finding somebody that had, that had gone missing uh, a little over a year ago. Um, so uh, in smaller communities, especially in communities where militias are actually pretty popular, they call on militias regularly to help find people who are lost or to uh, assist the community with anything else they need without having to call on police officers and uh, pull them away from, from their duties as police officers and get them involved. They just call the militia and, and they, they help their communities uh, by and large. But as far as protecting from the federal government, they uh, haven't had to do that in, uh, in quite some time, and I'm hoping that they don't have to start. All right, Cherie Gio joining us uh, with the Truth Frequency Radio. Thanks so much for weighing in on that.